The heroes are dropping like flies, a familiar iconic villain appears, and Midoriya reaches his breaking point. Let's talk about all of this and more as we dive right into the newest chapter of My Hero Academia. So My Hero Academia Chapter 317 is finally out, and with it we get to see what exactly happened after the world's greatest heroes exploded. Does Horikoshi have some sort of fetish with explosions now? I mean, everyone's just been literally exploding in the last two chapters. You get an explosion, you get an explosion, you all get an explosion! In this chapter, we see the heroes plan a new course of action in taking down All for One, another armed assassin appears to capture Midoriya, and Midoriya turns his back on All Might. But before I begin talking about this chapter, I'm first going to go into a quick summary of what happened last time. And as usual, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. In the last chapter, Hawks, in seeing Lady Nagant plummeting to her debt, decided that he couldn't live in a world without the fandom's new queen. And so he joined in in the femme fatale's fatal freefall. Midoriya, not wanting to lose two of the series' sexiest characters, used the last of his strength to catch the wingless chicken man and and his explosive mentor with his quirk, Black Whip. Now falling at a far gentler speed with the woesome waifu in his arms, our number one chicken man and number two hero did as any Nagant loving simp would and begged the subtle sniper to wake up proclaiming that she is still a hero. Nagant, in hearing her successor's cries and probably my countless prayers, bless you Lord Horikoshi, wakes up and tells the heroes everything she knows about All For One's plan and his location. And with her remaining breath, she asks Hawks how he's still still has the eyes of a hopeful hero. To which, Hawks replies, he's an optimist, and he's always had Papa Endeavor in his corner. Endeavor then barges onto the scene, holding on to Overhaul, who, in realizing he's going back to being a prison bitch, begs the heroes to bring him to his adoptive dad. Midoriya then steps forward and tells the ex-mob boss, don't you ever talk to me or my daughter again, unless you're going to apologize to her. Then we cool, and then the scene fades out. And it cuts back in to the current functioning top heroes storming all for one supposed hideout. Upon entering the building, however, they quickly learn that they have been duped, as All for One's hologram appears and he informs the heroes that they have once again fallen into his trap. All for One tells the heroes that hero society is BS and biased, and that he has no interest in All Might anymore. The only person he cares about now is Midoriya. Did he forget that All Might punched him so hard that not only was his regeneration quirk not strong enough to fix him, but he also turned into a goddamn potato? I think he might have forgotten about that. And chapter 316 ended with All For One leaving Midoriya with the chilling sentiment, now it's your turn, as the mansion the hero stormed blew up. And this is where chapter 317 picks up. The chapter actually opens up with a full page illustration of Deku's face, and in it he has bags under his eyes and overall he looks really tired, some foreshadowing for what is to come. But immediately after this shot we see the heroes who stormed All For One's forest mansion all reunited and unharmed in a seaside storehouse. Edshot explains that they unsurprisingly narrowly escaped the exploded building. However, they did lose any and all information about All For One and the League of Villains in the explosion. So basically, the heroes are back to square one. Edshot asks Hawks if they can get any more information or clues about the villain's whereabouts from Lady Nagant, but he replies that it's highly unlikely, as she's still unconscious and her body is heavily injured, to the point that the doctors from Central Hospital, the most advanced hospital in all of Japan, were shocked by the fact that she's still alive. That's the power of simps for you. With seemingly no other options left, Edgeshot proposes that maybe now is the time to risk it all and reveal the truth about one for all to every hero, in order to form a giant unified search group. Mount Lady steps forward and brings up the point that after everything that has happened with Lady Nagant, Midoriya has a much heavier weight on his shoulders, and she believes that their main focus should be on supporting him, since not only is he the one most likely to run into villains, but he is also their one hope. But in hearing all of this, Endeavor interrupts the conversation saying, remember how Death Arms retired to days ago. And with this, we get a quick flashback where we see Dead Arms taking off his hero costume as he is explaining why he is retiring. Dead Arms explains that day in and day out, 
out, he struggled for the people without a single moment's rest. Yet, all he got in return was criticism and hate. He is aware that there are some people out there still cheering for him, but he says that one negative comment hits harder than 10 compliments ever could. And he ends his speech by saying he thought he was a hero, but deep down, he is only human. Now, not only is this a scarily very real look into the mental health side of being someone who puts themselves out into the public, but it's also a heartbreaking moment in the My Hero world. Dead Arms, while definitely not being the most notable or beloved character in the series, very much being a side character in the overall narrative, was actually one of the very first heroes we were ever introduced to. In fact, in the anime, he is the first hero we get a formal introduction to, and he has been present throughout the entirety of the series. He's there for Midoriya's first hero moment, he was one of the heroes on patrol at the sports festival, and as Genus mentions in this chapter, he was one of the few heroes who took the lead in exposing the spies of the Paranormal Liberation Front. So to see a character who we would associate with the origins and really the heart of this beloved story drop everything and give up because of something so relatable and understandable and oddly real is kind of heartbreaking. And it's an absolute testament to Horikoshi's writing to have a character whose entire MO was just another one of the heroes exit be so impactful. If not for the audience, then for the characters themselves within the story. But anyway, as it cuts to the present, Best Genist, after bringing up Dead Arm's devotion in the paranormal war, mentions how the heroes are dropping like flies. And Endeavor brings up the point that some of the retired heroes are even contacting the media to leak information. So the people are actually getting closer to finding out about Deku and Want For All. And if that truth was to get out to the world right now, all of this negativity towards heroes and hero society would be directed at Midorian. Mount Lady then poses the question that if the world would descend into utter chaos if the truth about Want For All got released to the public, why hasn't All For One exposed it yet? And Endeavor answers this question saying that he must have some reason to avoid it. Plus, if that ever happened, all of the hero's resources would then go into keeping Midoriya hidden. However, while on this thought, Endeavor also recognizes that if they were to keep Midoriya hidden, then they would never be able to find any clues about the villain's whereabouts. And the heroes all fall silent, as they all come to the depressing realization that there just aren't enough police and heroes anymore. It's actually a pretty great moment where we just have this image of the hero sitting in silence as they know they can't really do anything to help anyone. But this silence is abruptly interrupted when Endeavor receives a text from everyone's favorite half and half bastard, Shoto Todoroki. Endeavor's phone shows that he has one missed call from his adoring son and one message from him too asking for his dad to pick up. Instead of calling him back, however, Endeavor thinks about his conversation with Shoto in the hospital, and he grasps his phone proclaiming that they will have to wait just a bit longer to go after Dobby. It's fun to see how much Endeavor and Shoto's relationship has grown over time. Previously in the story, Endeavor would constantly try to contact Shoto to no avail, but now the roles are reversed, where Shoto is the one trying to contact Endeavor, and Endeavor is the one who won't pick up. Although, I really hope Endeavor didn't just leave his son on scene. He already has daddy issues, the last thing he needs now is neglect. Shortly after Endeavor received his message from Icy Hot, Hawks also receives a text from All Might, who informs the winged hero that Midoriya has made contact with another assassin. And the story cuts over to this absolutely amazing shot of Midoriya, as it's also revealed that he has already defeated the villain. Psh, this guy really thinks he can compare to Nagant? Get this assassin wannabe out of here! After claiming his victory, against another assassin, if you can call him that, Midoriya proceeds to jump past a worried All Might as he warns him to be careful because the villain might explode just like Nagant. All Might, shocked at the young hero's quick work, shouts at Midoriya to wait as he pulls out another bento box for the green-haired phenomenon. Aw, classic dad might, just looking out for his baby boy. But... 
Deku doesn't turn around to face his one-time idol, as he refuses the bento box and tells All Might that he doesn't have to follow him anymore. Midoriya then begins to walk away from his hero as All For One's words echo in his head. You're next. In seeing his surrogate son walk away, All Might pleads with Midoriya to stay, but Midoriya informs All Might that he can now move at 100% without sustaining any of the injuries just like All Might could, and so there's no reason for anyone to be following him around. But All Might, understanding that Midoriya is only saying all of this because he doesn't want to risk losing his mentor after everything that has happened, thinks about how he should have told Midoriya not to push himself too hard, and how it's okay to take a break. And as Midoriya turns and gives his mentor one final look, he tells his childhood hero, you don't need to worry about me. All Might yells at Midoriya once more, but this time the young hero fully ignores his idols, please. And as All Might desperately reaches out his hand to stop his successor from going too far, Midoriya jumps away, ignoring his mentor's hand and causing the former symbol of peace to fall onto the ground, dropping the bento box. And as All Might kneels on the ground in regret, the panel shows that just around the corner, the hero killer Stain was listening to the entire conversation. Oh man, this is getting good. Following this, we then see a bunch of text bubbles showing us how the citizens of Japan are talking about Midoriya. Some citizens see him as a watchful, multiple quirk-wielding guardian who will always come to their rescue, while others think that having multiple quirks means he must be affiliated with All For One, and they fear that Midoriya is actually just another Nomu. However, this belief that he is a Nomu doesn't stick, as they note how he is covered with scars blood and mud. And as the people's thoughts and fears echo over the city streets, chapter 317 comes to an end as we are greeted with this absolutely terrifying yet utterly amazing image of a beastly Midoriya as the public's general consensus declares, whatever he is, he doesn't look anything like a hero. Oh my god, he looks so damn cool! Overall, this was a fantastic chapter. The hero's talk at the start was a great way of showing us just how much the heroes are in a tight situation. They are so desperate to take action and make change, yet they are being overwhelmed by the public, and the one thing they can do to start fixing everything, take down the league, is always just out of their reach. Death Arm's retirement hit a lot harder than I thought it would, which is a credit to Horikoshi narrative and character writing. Also, I wanted to mention how I find it really interesting that most of the remaining heroes now have scars. Mount Lady, Endeavor, and even Hawks. These scars seem to act as a physical representation of those that have suffered serious mental or emotional trauma. Mount Lady lost fellow hero and rival Midnight. Hawks had to kill his friend and kindred spirit twice, and Endeavor lost not only his son, but the love of his family. All these characters have lost something or someone they can never truly get back, and their scars are a constant reminder that things will never be just how they were, which is a phenomenal little detail to add in. Midoriya abandoning All Might was a massive moment I really didn't see coming, but it makes so much sense. Plus, I adored the way it wasn't an, oh, I don't need you anymore reasoning, but rather a, look, I can do this on my own, and I don't want you to unnecessarily get hurt. In Midoriya's head, he is doing what he always does and is looking out for All Might, but this time, it might not be the best choice. Stain making an appearance came out of absolutely nowhere, and it has me curious as for what's next with this character. And of course, the final shot of Midoriya in this chapter is mwah, chef's kiss, perfect. To think that this little quirkless kid would turn into this this absolute monster. I don't think anyone saw that coming. But let me know what you think of this chapter. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment your thoughts and opinions below. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra.